fromage fry. If Kashane Thompson had used a simple legal hack, would his Olympic silver medal be in gold? Today is the last day of the Olympics. One week ago, American Noah Lyles became Olympic champion in the marquee event, the men's athletics 100 metre sprint. Noah won gold by beating Jamaica's Kashane Thompson by just one five thousandth of a second. Literally that much boo boo. In this video, I will take a look at and ask the question, would silver medalist Kishane Thompson have won gold if he had used a simple and perfectly legal hack? Before I do that, as this is predominantly a food related channel to celebrate another successful Olympics by the homeland of one of my grandfathers, America, I'm going to have a go on some American chocolate. If you're here just for the hack, please jump to this timestamp. Right, let's have a crack at this. Right guys, so what have we got here? So we got some Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Now I'm sure probably everyone watching this video has probably had these, but I haven't. I have never ever had one of these, never. I don't think I've ever had any of Reese's products. I don't think I have. So let's try one. We'll, we're, it's just going to be a very quick review because of, this video really is all about this hack. And it's been bugging me for years and I need to I need to get it out there and, and see what you guys think. Right, here we go. So this is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Now is this made in America? I think how a brand of that looked like it probably is. Um, so we've got milk, 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 soya, lecithin, peanuts as allergens. Uh, 521 calories per 100 grams. Man of, oh no, it's manufactured in Mexico, not America. Roy, right, okay. Imported by Euro Food Brands. Northampton. Right. How much did it cost? Now I got this, so a 77 grams, and I got this on a slight deal, 135 out of Morrison's, normal price 150. So it's quite pricey really, and 150 for 77 grams. But let's have a go on it. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh crikey, give I can open that. So they come in individual little crikey there, small. Wow. I'm sure, I mean, I haven't had one, but I'm sure I've seen these bigger than this. That is tiny. That's tiny. Huh? I bet they're richer, aren't they? Right. Oh my god, oh that's good, uh, he's in a little cupcake, a uh, little, uh, can't think of the name of them. Oh, I should have put them in the fridge. Oh, do you know, I can't think of the name of these things. Whatever is it, Boo Boo? I, I can't think of the name of it. Right, this look really, so there we are. Let's see what I think of this boo boo. So these are, I think, Reese's are a Hershey's. 
our own boy Hershey's. I don't think I've ever had Hershey's chocolate before. Never. Right, let's go for it. Mmm. That's nice. That is good. A little bit on the small side though. Even putting it in all in one go. I'd like that to have, I'd like twice as that to munch on. So, a bit pricey for me. Lovely tasting. Score. Bit pricey, but it's pretty unique product. I mean, this has been in the UK for years, I think. Years and years, I believe. But I don't think we really have anything else like this. I can't think of anything, do we? Chocolate Bar Andy, do... Like, is there another product that's been on our shelves a while? Maybe a British product or a European product similar to this. I can't think of one. So, for that reason, yeah, I'd buy it again. But it is a bit pricey. is tasty. I think I'd score that about an 8.2. Right, guys, there we are. What do you think of Reese, Reese's, um, what are they call peanut butter cups? I know some people absolutely love them, don't they? Right, let's get, let's get down to the, uh, the business end of this video. So let's fire up the laptop. Right, guys, so this hack is more of, it's not really a hack. It's just common bloomin' sense. I've been watching athletics, well, all my life pretty much. But the last few years, I've been looking at this and thinking, why? Why do they do this? It's got to slow them down. It's got to. So before we get into it, let's just see how close this final actually was. So there's a picture of the finished line. And as you can see, both... Uh, Noah Lyles and Kishane Thompson finished on a time of 9.79 seconds. And apparently, I mean, you can see just that tiny line is is uh, splitting them. And apparently that represents one five thousandth of one second. So the hack is... Why are they carrying extra weight? I just do not understand why these athletes want to go out all dressed up when they're in an Olympic final, suffering they've been training for their whole lives to win a gold medal and they need to get from A to B in the fastest time and they go and carry weight they don't need. Why? So the hack is, why just take off your watch, take off your neck chain, take off your sunglasses. You're racing at night. What are you wearing sunglasses for? This all adds weight. And when you're talking about one five thousandth of one second, that is going to make a difference. Now, you're all probably sit there thinking, Nah, that can't make a difference. That can't do. Because they wouldn't do it. There's no way they would wear that stuff if it slowed them down. I've been there. I've convinced myself that as well. But when you really stop and think about it, of course it slows you down. When you add weight, so you need to get from A to B, it don't matter whether you need to, whether you're on a push bike, a motorbike, a car, you add weight to it, it's going to need to use more energy to get from A to B, right? But that doesn't start to be applied once you get to a certain weight. So you don't have to add a pound before it starts slowing you down. It's starting to slow you down 
the moment you add that first gram. Right, now you're probably still not convinced because you're still sat there thinking, no, I'm not having it. We're in 2024, you know, sports science is probably so advanced now, there's no way they would let them run or race carrying this baggage if it was slowing them down. Right, okay then, let's take another look at this from a different angle. I'm a massive F1 fan. I've followed F1 since the late 80s. Now, in 2014, Lewis Hamilton joined Mercedes. And Nico Rosberg was already established in the team. He'd been at the team at least two or three years, I think, possibly longer. Lewis Hamilton replaced Michael Schumacher. Now, he came into the team. Nico Rosberg was already established in the team. And they had... Nico and Lewis had grown up together. They were this, roughly the same age. And their whole careers, they'd been fighting one another. Even in go-karting. Racing against each other. So it was a real, real rivalry between the two. So when Lewis joined Nico's team... It was like this. They both desperately needed to beat each other. But Lewis had the edge over Nico. He was always the slightly quicker driver. And because the Mercedes car was so strong back then, there wasn't really any other um, competition. It was one of the Mercedes was going to win the world championship. Which one was it? The first two years, Lewis Hamilton just had the edge on Nico. 2014, 2015, Lewis won the World Championship. Now, Nico came out 2016 absolutely determined to do everything he possibly could to beat Lewis Hamilton. He was not going to lose a third time. And he did. He went on and won the world title in 2016. And after he won, because it was a real close scrap, right, it went right down to the wire, He did, but he won. And about, I think it was about a week after he, he won the championship, completely out of the blue, he announced his retirement. Because deep down, he knew he, could, he probably couldn't do that again. Because he literally threw the kitchen sink at Lewis Hamilton that season. And no doubt some of the, the things he did would come out. Hamilton would uh, copy him. And then he'd take back that edge. And one of the things Nico Rosberg did to give him an edge to shave some lap time. Was he took some of the paint off his crash helmet. He removed some of the paint. This is all done in secret. So I, do, I think it was only partially. It weren't the whole paint off the whole crash helmet. Because Hamilton would have noticed what he was doing. And copied him. So he just took some of it off. And that gave him an edge. I mean we're talking the most minuscule of, of amounts of time. But it sped him up very slightly. And over the course of a season, he got an edge from that. Now, he did do other things. I'm not sure. I can't remember. It's a long time ago I learned this. I got a feeling he also did things like he didn't wear any underpants or he cut his socks down or something like that. Just take any little bit of weight off, just a few grams. So my argument here is if... Just a few grams can have an effect on a machine that weighs probably about 800 kilos back then. Them cars weighed about 800 kilos plus the driver. And they're a thousand horsepower. So they're 1000 horsepower machines weighing about 800 kilos. And just removing a few grams of weight will very slightly speed them up. So of course, doing exactly the same thing 
removing a few grams of weight is going to make a difference to a human being who has a lot, lot less power to push itself through that air. So, and you're not only talking weight here. Let's take a look at um, this picture here. Where is it? So here's the picture. They've just finished the race and they're waiting for the times to come up. Now, to be fair, if they both did the hack, Noah Lyles would have won the race and he'd have probably won it in a clear time. That wouldn't have been the same time because Noah is very clearly carrying more weight. But Kashane is wearing a neck chain and he has got an earring in as well. Now, we're only talking a few grams, but after what I've just explained, I think that few grams would have been enough to put him very slightly ahead of Noah had Noah been wearing what he was wearing. I think that's cost him the gold medal. And I think in 20 years' time, none of these athletes will be going out on that track wearing anything they don't need to wear. It will literally be the lightest trainers they can wear, sneakers if you're American. They'll have the, the lightest pair of trainers, which they've probably already got. They're probably already the lightest they can be. And they will wear the most minimal clothing. Men will probably shave their heads bald. Because that's the other thing. You see some of these athletes, some of the ladies, they've got loads of hair. That is creating loads of drag. And if you th think about it, right... They're running, the men are running, what, 25, 30 miles an hour. You go along in a car and open the car window at 30, 30 miles an hour and you just slightly put your hand out the window and you feel that wind. That's how much force is pushing you back at that speed. So if you've got a big load of hair flailing around at the back or you've got a big old watch on your wrist like nowhere has there, that's catching the wind. That's slowing him down. That's creating drag. I just cannot believe in 2024 that these athletes who are trained their whole lives to win an Olympic gold and they're going dressing up like they're going out for a night out. I just do not understand it. No doubt some of the reason is they're probably possibly he's got a watch sponsorship, Noah, and that's why he's wearing a watch. I mean, why would you put a watch on? I mean, watches can be quite weighty, can't they? I just don't understand it. So there it is. It's not a hack. It's just common sense. And no doubt, once upon a time, if you was to, well, like when I was a kid watching the Olympics, like the first Olympics I can really properly remember is Los Angeles 1984. Carl Lewis, um, he won the 100, 200, 4x100 and the long jump. Now, I bet, I haven't checked this, but I wouldn't mind betting most of the athletes back then were not wearing anything they didn't need to. So it's almost like we've gone full circle and we've gone back to a point where, like I so say, I think in 20 years' time, future athletes are going to look back and think of this, why on earth were they wearing all that? That's ridiculous. I mean, I would love... I mean, look at the size of Noah's neck chain there. That's a big old chunky chain he's got. He's got um, the big chunky watch on and he's got a load of wristbands on. I just I just don't understand that. If he'd have removed all that, he would have probably won that race quite comfortably. He'd have won that by two or three 100, sort of thought. And there'd have been no, like, real, oh, have I won, haven't I won, oh, this is close. He could have lost that gold simply because he's put too much clothing on or accessories on. Crazy, crazy. Now, who who has thought of this? Because I, I mentioned this, I went into work a couple of days ago, and I mentioned to a workmate, and as I was telling him, he was smiling and, and nodding his head and he said you know what he said me and my wife had this exact conversation at the time 
Why are they wearing all this stuff? It must be slowing them down. So there must be thousands of people out there who who are wondering this. Now, part of the reason I'm putting this out there is what is the science behind this? It is slowing them down. There's no doubt about it. Extra weight slows you down. But boy, how much? What is the maths on this? Have we got any mathematicians out there stumbled on this um, video who can actually calculate if you add like, I don't know, say 50 grams of weight, how much is that going to slow a uh, 80 kilo man down, 90 kilo man, something like that. How much would that slow? It's got, there's got to be math, math, mathematics out there somewhere to work out exactly how much time this is costing them because I just cannot believe they're doing this. And I think in years to come, when athletes do stop wearing all this stuff, Kishane Thompson is going to kick himself and think, blimey, if only I weren't wearing that neck chain that night. That earring that had a little bit of weight little bit of drag. I could have won that gold. Right, there we are, guys. Please get in the comments. Let me know what you think. How long are you... If you're thinking the same, how long... Have, how many years have you been watching this, wondering the same thing? Yeah. Right, there we are. That, guys, is a special video. Uh, that is a thinking outside of the box video, that is. These people have got to start thinking outside of the box. I think if Kishane had off, I think it'd have been the gold man. The gold medalist. Right, there we are, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope you join me and our Boo Boo, the Custard Kid, again soon on another video. Take care, guys. Right, come on then, Boo Boo. Do the high jump. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you'd win the high jump, Boo Boo. Right, let's give Bob his. Hey, are my man? Good lad. Oh, he's dropped it. Oh. Hey, are Bo Bo. Oh, we can't pick him up, Bo. Hey, are. Good lad. Bonjour, guys. <laughs>